morning guys so I started my day with a little bit of white tea this morning which is mm, just lovely and I usually do have a bigger jar but I ended up spilling about half of it this morning as I was stringing out the leaves and then with those leaves I added a little bit of hibiscus and rose hips and then brewed that again it got this really beautiful dark red tea that you guys saw this morning added that into my smoothie with some blueberries and it has made a delicious very punchy sweet smoothie all-time favorites so you guys probably also noticed that while I was making my smoothie I also took my supplements for the day so that is my b12 which I take four to five times a week and then my omega-3 EPA slash DHA supplement that I talked about a couple of weeks ago and those two are the only official supplements that I take because I live in the tropics and I have access to year-long vitamin D through skin synthesis I I don't take a vitamin D supplement, but if I lived further north or south, I might consider that. Other than those, I don't take supplements because I like to get my nutrients through my food. That is why today I was eating things like a little bit of kelp powder in my smoothie for the iodine and a little bit of blackstrap molasses for the iron and calcium that that contains. And then I also ate a Brazil nut, which is very, very high in selenium. So including some very select foods and supplements in my diet, like the ones that I just showed you, I'm pretty much able to cover all of my nutrient bases and you guys know that I'm able to do that Hopefully because you have seen some of my previous videos where I have logged my full day of eating into a program Like chronometer and that will bring us to our topic for today So before we start I would just like to say that I very strongly object to the idea of tracking our food intake every single day. I think programs that track our food intake can be a really valuable tool in playfully exploring the ideas of, you know, how much of which kinds of foods are going to help us to fulfill all of our nutrient needs. But beyond that fairly limited use, I believe that regularly using these programs is a benign waste of time at best, and a perfect avenue into obsessive restriction and eating disorders at worst. So the reasons that I dislike food and fitness trackers so much is that one, they exhibit calories as being the most important thing ever, and there's a special emphasis on making sure you don't eat too much. Two, these programs try to violate the laws of thermodynamics by insinuating that a calorie is a calorie and it doesn't matter what you eat as long as you don't eat too many calories. Weight loss is simply a matter of burning more calories than you consume, which is an overly simplistic, terrible understanding of calories and weight loss. And beyond that, perpetuating these types of simplistic ideas about weight loss is it's harmful to the physical and psycho-emotional health of people who are trying to lose weight and struggling. Three, if we as a user decide that weight loss is a goal, it doesn't really matter what our actual ideal weight is, which the app has no idea of knowing because that's totally unique to each and every person depending on their body composition and genetics and such. If we decide that weight loss is a goal, even if that weight loss is like deeply unhealthy, the app will help us by cutting our calories. And lastly, I really dislike these types of programs because they imply that accurate calculations of caloric need and caloric intake are actually possible. And they're not, not without a lab and a calorimeter and at least one freaking Bunsen burner. These programs apply that based on your height and your weight, they know your basal metabolic rate and they don't. Metabolic rate is dependent on hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of variables that human beings, even the best and brightest among us, are barely capable of understanding, if we're capable of understanding them at all. And these programs have no way of accounting for these variables. And actually, just now, I thought of another reason why I don't like these programs. They seem to always be wrong. I got a Fitbit a few years ago, 
I really didn't like it, but you know, I plugged in all of my information and the thing told me that based on my activity and my height and my weight, I should be eating about 1900 calories a day. And I can tell you right now from about a decade of experience trying to starve myself and nearly a decade of experience actually feeding myself, 1900 calories a day is not gonna do it for me. And I'm bringing all of this up today because I recently got a comment from one of my awesome viewers who basically said, Lily, I saw you using Chronometer on some of the videos where you track nutrients and I started using it every day. But Chronometer suggested that I needed to eat X amount of calories every day in order to maintain my weight. And so I noticed that I was eating quite a bit more than that. And so I purposefully changed the amount that I was eating to lower the calorie intake level. Long story short, this person got tired. They didn't feel like exercising. They noticed that they were getting cold all the time. They noticed that their mood was poor. And yet because Chronometer and these other tracking apps come across as like oh so scientific and accurate, they don't know what to do. Who do you listen to? Well, I can tell you who you shouldn't listen to and that's the calorie tracking app. Though I wish I could be a cheerleader in each and every one of your living rooms saying, listen to your body. Because I encourage all of us to remember that number one, there is not a computer or a human brain in this world that is adequately equipped to dictate what your body needs. So trust your body more than an algorithm. Also remember number two, calorie restrictive diets correlate with long-term weight gain. That is a scientific fact that has been found in study after study after study. Calorically restrictive diets are not an effective route to permanent weight loss. Period. End of story. Please remember number three. Calorie restrictive diets lower thyroid function. Therefore, calorie restrictive diets lower basal metabolic rate. Calorie restricted diets lower your energy levels. They make you feel fatigued and like you don't want to exercise. Calorie restricted diets create hormone imbalances, leading to higher hunger, worse sleep, all kinds of irregularities in the menstrual cycle, and even bone loss. And perhaps most importantly, they lead to miserable, unfulfilling lives. Has science convinced you? Good. Now what to do? Well, it's fairly simple, though you may not want to hear it. Stop tracking calories and listen to your body. I know that idea might make you feel a little bit petrified. I know that it certainly scared the crap out of me at first too. Like, listen to my body? She's unhinged. We'll be eating chocolate cake all day. Because I had allowed the dieting industry to gaslight me out of listening to my body and my natural hunger cues for so long that I didn't know where to start. I didn't even know what hunger felt like. I knew absolutely starving and overstuffed after a binge. That was all I could pick up on. And because I had been so undernourished for so long, my body would ask for so much food. It would actually scare me a little bit. I know for sure that it scared other people who would watch me eat and they would just have these horrified looks on their faces as I piled in more and more food. <laughs> I'm just hungry. But it scared me because I was like, am I ever gonna be full? Like, will I ever feel satisfied again? Or am I destined to just like blow myself up to 2,000 pounds? I didn't know, and it was honestly pretty scary, but the only thing that was scarier than just letting myself eat finally was facing the rest of my life never being satisfied of always being hungry, of always having horrible cravings, of always failing eventually and giving in to cravings and binging. So what really helped me as I was learning to listen to internal cues from my body instead of external cues like calorie counting was to stick to whole plant foods as much as possible. Whole plant foods are full of nutrients and fiber and water and all of those are really great at working with our bodies to allow our bodies to send us accurate hunger and fullness 
cues. So because of the nature of whole plant foods, it's actually easier to get to a point where you'll be eating approximately the correct volume of food that contains approximately the correct number of calories and approximately the correct amount of macro and micronutrients. And I found that after a few months of practice and consistency, my body became really adept at telling me almost exactly how much of what types of foods I needed to thrive. And after several months of just allowing my undernourished, hungry, hungry body to eat as much as she wanted, my body also became so adept at getting rid of extra unnecessary body fat that I didn't need anymore. And it seemed to become so good at just burning through any extra calories that I might have been eating. My metabolism became healthy again, and my healthy metabolism gave me and gives me so much flexibility in allowing me to just eat however much I want until I'm satisfied. I felt for years like if I even looked at junk food, I would gain weight because I did. I had no metabolic flexibility, but nowadays I can indulge, I can be lazy for a while and just not bother to work out for a month or two, and it doesn't have any significant effect on my weight or my overall health. Now again, this took time, consistency, patience, and a whole lot of self-compassion, especially in the early days before my metabolism had healed and regained that kind of flexibility, because as I fed my body what it was asking for, which was a lot of food, I did gain a little bit of rebound weight. But as scary as it was to face my fears about weight gain and my worthiness and how I fit into the world and my relationships at a, um, a bigger size, with the hindsight that I have now, the choice to nourish my body was a 1000% better use of my time than perpetuating the cycle of obsessive calorie tracking, restriction, and binges. And so as someone who has slogged through it, <laughs> I implore each and every one of you, miraculously complex, inherently deserving, worthy, sweet human beings to forget about calories and instead invite deep nourishment. Instead of focusing on less, allow each and every meal to become an opportunity to welcome life-giving macro and micronutrients into every cell. Embrace your body's innate capacity to accurately ask for exactly what it needs and enthusiastically explore your options in fulfilling those subtle cues. There's so much joy and freedom available here, and since life can be just like so painful and challenging in so many ways, for the love of you, don't let calories be a source of pain and frustration anymore. It doesn't have to be that way, and one of the first steps is to let go of the calorie counting. It's erroneous. It's inherently inaccurate. It is a frickin' waste of time. It's a lot more fun to celebrate food and eating and celebrate your body digesting and absorbing nutrients and the way that we're just like able to move and be and exist in this miraculous world and all of the freaking little variables that exist to keep us going and functional and relatively healthy on this planet, on this biosphere, in this universe. It's just appalling to think that we would spend our time on chronometer. <laughs> but of course, like all that said, I'm sure a lot of you found programs like chronometer through my videos. And if you are in a place in your process where you feel really comfortable going on, you know, 
every like two weeks or once a month or however often you feel excited to explore the information. You know, if you want to go on to a tracking program to make sure that your nutrients are solid and to explore ways to increase your nutrient intake, then certainly don't stop yourself from taking advantage of that resource. But you need to be really honest with yourself as you go on and use these tools Am I using this like a tool or is it starting to run my life? Am I capable of looking at the amount of calories that I've supposedly eaten today based on like an erroneous, inherently inaccurate measurement? Am I able to see that and not feel anything about it? Am I able to see that, feel something about it, and then self-soothe with compassion myself away from those feelings and further cement the idea that calories are fuel, calories are energy, calories are what allow me to live a happy, enthusiastic, joyful, effective life. And so they are a good thing as opposed to something that needs to be eliminated or limited. So you have to know yourself, you have to be honest with yourself, you have to listen to yourself, you have to be flexible with yourself, and more than anything you have to feed yourself. So I hope that this has been both clear and nuanced enough for you guys <laughs> to know what's actionable for you. And I hope you now all know that there is never such a thing as, oh hey Lily, just a quick question. Ain't no quick questions in the paradox of life. And on that note, I think I shall go forage in my kitchen. Stop it. Oh my god. Now that is a calorically adequate lunch, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I have a couple of small heads of baby romaine lettuce as a bed. I have some leftover stir-fried veggies, carrots, onions, garlic, and bok choy from last night. It has a little bit of miso paste sauce. And then I have some plain chickpeas that I cooked yesterday. I sprinkled a little bit of Mrs. Dash over those and a little bit of Mrs. Dash over this adorable little potato that is going to accompany this beautiful salad. I got some sauerkraut right there. And then a big hearty hunk of my gluten-free bread, all whole grains, all oil-free, all delicious. The only problem is that I don't trust my nice blue shirt. The old tree frog napkin in there. Why don't they make bibs for adults? I just don't understand it. Okay, you guys, so there's no point in me being on camera if I'm chewing. <coughs> and it's dangerous when I try to talk and chew at the same time. So I will see you guys for dinner. There is my super beautiful dinner. Some chickpeas over here, steamed pumpkin, rice noodles, and I was actually able to control myself and only cook half of the box of rice noodles this time. <laughs> and then I have a um, salad. It's Napa cabbage or Chinese cabbage, depending on where you live. Some shredded carrot, red onion, tomato, dressing as garlic and apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of, um, chilies from my yard. You're distracting me. Oh, I'm sorry. Sunflower seeds, and then I have an unceremonious blob of black tahini right there. Mm. Because I went to the store and I specifically went to the store to get regular tahini, and then I left the store with no tahini, but I still managed to spend 50 bucks. So this is going to be me for dinner. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the topic. Please leave questions and comments down below. I will get to those as I'm able. And as always, make better choices for yourself. No one will do it for you and take really, really such good care. I will see you all very soon. Bye. You like say bye. Huh? They're in the lens. This is good, by the way. It's a little spicy. Oh, it kind of comes in after, yeah, the spice. <laughs> sneaks up on you. I knew somebody else who sneaks up on you. Is he spicy? Mm. No. 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 Stop it. Love you. I love you too.
Bye. Bye. I covered it in sweet chili sauce, but just like a reasonable amount. I feel like I'm planning all my meals like, hmm, what do I have that would go with sweet chili sauce? Which anyone who's eaten sweet chili sauce knows is a ridiculous question because the answer to that is everything. Everything goes well with sweet chili sauce. You get popcorn. Especially popcorn.